guys, and we're back with uh, part two of episode one of season four, the State of the Tabletop Union 2012. And uh, my panel, as shown, we kind of introduced them last time. We're going to go ahead and jump on over to question number four. What two things can happen in the next calendar year, so throughout 2012, to improve any of the numbers from the first three questions. That is basically an improvement of uh, the tabletop gaming perspective from the player's perspective, from a game developer's perspective, retail store perspective, camera issues, no, um, YouTube channel perspective. Uh, and with that, we're going to go ahead and start with John from Wargame Painting. I was afraid you were going to start with me. All right, we're going to start with Tony from the Sustainable Center. <laughs> oh, I want to get somebody else's answer. I really don't have a good answer. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, I'll take the ball. I'll, I'll, do it. It. I'll do it. And we're back I'll to John from Wargame right. Painting. All right, so I think that the major thing that we have to see is the players take initiative. And I think that's been the theme of all of my answers, even though I'm being the optimist, which is really weird, and I'm getting kind of like shivers at my spine. Like, the apocalypse is really coming. But it's got to be the players who take initiative. I mean, hats off to Tony for finding Puppet Wars. It sounds awesome, and I would have never heard of it if I hadn't seen it on his channel. So, I mean, like it's, it's stuff like that. And, I mean, if I wasn't broke, I'd probably go pick up the box. But it's got to be an art court. We have to take initiative. We have to be like, yes, this is our hobby. We want to improve it, and we have to we have to group up. And it's like the same thing that we have to do with our country right now. We have to realize that yes, we're all gamers, we're all dorks, we're all losers, and we have to we have to lock together and you know hoist our game to the next level, or else China's going to take over. I don't know something. Like that. Okay, okay. So that that's that's your first one. What's the second thing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the second thing would probably have to be in, uh, and, I, and I love that you're you're telling me to go further, so I'm assuming you don't have an answer for this question either. <laughs> no, 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 uh, I do. Um, <laughs> but I, I gotta say, it's gonna take. It's gonna be on the internet. We have to we have to start doing stuff on the the internet. We have to have more blogs. We have to release better content. I know that's hard. I don't want to do videos every week. I've told myself repeatedly that I want to do videos. And after I edited that nightmare together yesterday, it took two hours. It's four minutes long. I mean, like, just the will and the drive to live after doing that, let alone release another video. I mean, so it's, it's again, in our court. We have to increase the awareness to the product to get it to go better towards a goal that we set. And John can find all of that if he just stops beta testing Dota 2. Tony, what's your what's your uh, take on <laughs> on your two things that can... Uh, wow. what's, a, what's a Dota 2? Uh, um, I, 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 I think... Uh, I, I honestly don't know. I'm sorry, uh, John, if it's something involving you. I don't know what it is. Um, it's not something involving me. It's, okay. it's, it's a video game. Uh, I... I Okay, I, I don't know. I have a life. I don't know these things. Um, I, I think I think the uh, the same issue has occurred in the because um, I follow a lot of Battlefield and Modern Warfare Three, which is the you know polar opposite of this, but very popular. So uh, in in that gaming community, they're trying to figure out between gamers and the game developers how they they want to shape themselves going forward. So gamers either need to decide in the video game community, but also really star community, are you going to PTFO? Play to effing own, meaning I don't care. I'm going to take the best equipment, or I'm going to take the best army, and I'm just going to play to win, and that's how I'm going to enjoy my hobby. Or am I just going to be the exact opposite? I'm just going to fool around. I'm going to shoot RPGs up in the air, and I'm going to take, you know, the sergeant with the plasma pistol and the power fist, just because I think it looks cool, and that's what I want to do. And I, I think that's where it's going to go. So your gaming community, your local areas, I think is either going to be split into you're going to be the PTFO. It's hyper competitive, but you're going to be the let's play a storyline, let's play for fluff, and let's just enjoy the the, the backstory and having fun with the game. Uh, I think game developers are also going to go in the same direction. You know, are we going to make this a fun game and not tote it as competitive, or are we going to make this hardcore competitive game and attract that particular group? And I, I think that's the the two things that are going to happen. And if people don't identify, 
the gamers, the hobby is going to fall apart for them in their area as the hobbyists and the PTFO people clash. And if you can't determine a direction for your business and you try to do both, you'll wind up doing either and you'll wind up going belly up. Smurf, what's your answer? We need to, we need to realize that this isn't a me problem. It's an us problem. You know, as a community, it, it's so many people are going, how can I get better? How can I do this? How can I do that? It needs to be the, how can we do this? How can we do that? And we need to break down that stigma of the, the smelly nerd. You know, I think we should have game nights where everyone wears suits, drinks scotch, and smokes cigars, you know, and <laughs> it would be awesome. But that's just me. Um, I mean, have a classy, I mean, you have people who go gambling. They're rolling dice, and they have a, a beautiful woman on their arm. Why can't I have a beautiful woman on my arm while I roll dice and blow up your dude? <laughs> you know? Because no, thousands Just of dollars it. aren't on the line based on rolling a seven. <laughs> <laughs> you can't roll a seven. Okay, so that's, 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 in there real that, quick. that's issue number one. What's, what's your second take? Um... On the other, no, no, that's what I was talking about. They, with the, the YouTube community, you know, everyone's going, what can, you know, and it's really, not what the YouTube community can do for you, but what you can do for the YouTube community, you know, and we need to step up to the plate and, you know, link arms, sing kumbaya, and make this awesome, you know, instead of trying to use each other for this or that or, you know, abusing our co-host or, you know, whatever, but it's all right. <laughs> Smurf <laughs> <laughs> and Tony yeah. only giving us one answer. That's fine. On this one. That's fine. Um, That's all so, I got. <laughs> okay. The I'm under the the assumption that you really need two things to happen. One is there has to be an improvement in the economy to really kind of across the board improve everything. I think if the economy got better, you would have more people having expendable money to, to purchase into the game, you're going to have, it's going to be better for the retailers, it's going to be better for the game developers, everything, right? Given more of something that you actually have a, a stake in, an ability to influence, getting really excited about whatever it is, whatever game it is that you play, I think it's going to be kind of a key thing. Um, because it, it tends to breed the notion of an excitement for that game. That's about it for me. Any further discussion? Uh, you mentioned the economy, and I, I kind of disagree, because what we'll see happen is, oh, people are making more money. We can charge more. Yay! You know, I mean, it's... I don't think people making more money is going to solve the problem. I think... Uh, Company, people making more money and then companies being smarter about how they market and their pricing structure for their companies is what's going to make people buy more. I got and to, uh, to further on the economy, I mean, uh, let, let, let's uh, let John jump in go, first. Go for it, you're, John, jump in first. Uh, yeah, because, because Tony's just going to punch John's answer in the face. <laughs> I don't off, know what it is yet. <laughs> first off, I don't know about you guys, but I do play tabletop games in a suit, drinking scotch and a cigar with two beautiful women's on my side. Beside the point, when I run for office, I'm running Just not on a video. party. <laughs> yes. And under the panda party, right? What are pandas? They're black, white, and Asians. And yet at the end of the day, they're still pandas. And that's my political stance. It's got to be the same stance for anything in the community, all right? We're all gamers. We got to just, like Smurf said, we have to hold hands and sing Kumbaya. If we wanted to get better, we have to just stay together, like Blackout March. All right? We got to do the same thing if we want to see a price decrease, because I agree. I don't think that people making more money, while it would help, I mean, you'd feel more comfortable dishing out 80 bucks to go buy a piece of plastic. It gives you the opportunity, though, John, to actually try right? games that you don't already have an investment in. Right, exactly. It, it allow you to branch out into something that you wouldn't right. normally have on into. But I do agree with Smurf too, where it's gonna have to be on the the end of the, the companies where I, I'm trying to release my own game and I'm looking at the way that I can release the game at the cheapest and still keep it floating. I mean like you know, it's you can't run a gaming company in the sense that you run an Xbox company or like Microsoft. You can't go into it saying I am solely in it to make money because I know my product will sell. 
You have to go into it. I want to release a product so I can make money to continue to release products. And it would just be this buffer of you get to do something you enjoy for the rest of your life because you are making enough money to progress your product to keep you, you know, not living out of a cardboard box. And now Tony gets to, you know. Tony, jump in with your answer. Well, I completely disagree with John's last statement. I think you can totally be in it just to make money and make a very enjoyable product that you can uh, mass produce and have a lot of people play 12 different armies if you can produce them. But on the financial aspect, GW's profits went up 60%. I can tell you one thing. They didn't get new gamers into the hobby. The, the, the pie did not grow. And they didn't steal uh, many gamers from other games. So... Regardless of the economy, people are finding ways to pay for this uh, system regardless. And in terms of the, the Kumbaya story, I mean, if you read blogs, you can see, you know, if you look at, uh, if you look at Battle of Lost Souls and you look at Yes, the Truth Hurts, both want a more competitive, more balanced games workshop experience. But the two of them will never hold hands and go Kumbaya, but they're both going for the same objective. And they want the, the, the PTFO system. Then mix in everybody else who is in the middle like me or just wants the hobby system. So I don't see this environment ever holding hands and singing uh, Kumbaya because everybody's marching to the own beat of their drum because we all spend a lot of money on this hobby. We all enjoy different aspects of it. And there's too much diversification there for everybody to unite, I think. Uh, and I don't know what we would do once we did unite. What, what would we uh, essentially want to do with that? Because we wouldn't know what direction to go in because we all want to go in a different direction. We'd all play Space Marines and no one would fight one another. <laughs> well, well, then you... Awesome hobby. <laughs> I would play Space Marines now anyway. Oh, good point. Anyways, let's get to the next question. Yeah. Uh, question number five. Uh, what do you think are most, are most likely to happen over the next year? And will it positively or negatively impact tabletop uh, wargaming community and the hobby in general? For this, we're going to start with Tony from the Sustainable Center. Uh, I think the two things that are going to happen is, first of all, 40K 6th edition. I don't think that's unrealistic. Everybody knows it's going to uh, happen. Uh, and I think it will affect the game positively. I think the because of the YouTube surge during 5th edition and the blog surge in 5th edition, GW had to listen. Also, uh, in addition to the games like Infinity and Privateer Press coming up in popularity, they have to listen whether they want to or not. So I think 6th will be a big improvement on 5th edition. And whether you play the game or not, I think it will benefit everybody. And the second part of that is somebody's going to release a major IPO. And I, I'm not talking about just 40K expanding into the video game console space and selling that IPO. I'm talking about Privateer Press going into that space or even Infinity. You know, it's a conceptual idea. They, they write all the storyline, the fluff in the background. It can definitely be pushed forward as a video game. And I think it's a it's an entry portal for a lot of people who just play video games into the tabletop uh, space. So I think those are the, the two things that are going to happen uh, in 2012. I think that's the year we're talking about. So, All right. Solid. This is this is a rough question. Um, I think we're going to see a drop off of baby channels on YouTube. I'm talking to the people who have less than five thousand subscribers. Um, I see these people. I see you over there, Tony. I see you. I got eight hundred. Um, yes, but I'm not everyone else does. The water. I, I see a lot of these channels. You know, divinity. I'm not saying all of them. I'm seeing them just kind of shrinking away, um, just because they can't keep up, um, because they don't have time to run a channel, a blog, and a website and a forum at the same time. Um, I see, you know, I, I see, much like America today, you know, I see the the middle class of wargaming, if you will, uh, just kind of disappearing. Um, I see you have the, the hyper elitist who have tons of money and time to sink into the hobby. And then I see the little guy who's begging on the side of the road for any piece of pewter to paint, stick on a base and call it a model. You know, but I, I don't see, I see the, the middle class of wargaming disappearing. All right, so that's one thing, Smurf. What's your other thing that's going to happen this year? <laughs> no, that was two. That was two things. The, the, the baby channels disappearing and the middle class disappearing as well. They're both okay. disappearing together at the same time. Gotcha. Two things. Two things disappear. Wow. John. I'm not using the same mathematical equations. Yeah. <laughs> John, let's go ahead and jump to your answer real quick. Better be two of them, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Enumerate them. I don't have an answer for this one. No. Okay, answer number one. 
I agree with Tony. I think that sixth edition hitting because that it will happen this year, uh, probably in middle of August or something, will impact all of the hobby games out there. I mean, it'll it'll be either taking up time in your game store because more people will be flooding into it, or you know, it'll be letting people be like, oh, okay, we're done with this and we're going to branch out. Could go either way. From what I've been reading, you know, I'm not entirely sold on it yet. And then the second thing I'd say that it's going to happen is through either legislation or just the lack of, you know, I mean, I certainly can't afford to invest anymore. We're going to see, like like Smurf said, we're going to see a huge chunk of people just getting out of the hobby through either outrage at something like SOPA or PIPA happening. And it's going to be like, like, like Brian pointed out, my video that I did, I'd owe Games Workshop like $9,000 for a five-minute video, all right? I mean, like, it, it, it's going to kill any level of blogs or YouTube videos if we can't do, you know, something like hold up a GW book. I don't have anyone near me, but you hold up a GW book on your channel, and your channel's going to get disbanded. And I'm not going to climb back up to 3,000 subs that I have. I'm, not, I'm just not going to do it. If my channel ever gets pulled for whatever reason, I'm not coming back. So, I mean... Some government interference is going to kill a huge portion of the hobby, I feel, at least. All right, okay. I so even said number one and number two. Yeah, thanks. Anyways, uh, so my two things. Number one, I think there is going to be a, a, a situation where with this m- big influx of new games that have recently become more commercially viable and more awareness are being brought on, onto them, uh, that people are actually going to have a chance to, to get into these games, test them out, decide if it's really the direction they want to go m- moving forward. Um, but at the conclusion of the year, a consolidation will occur again. Um, so these fir- the first half of 2012, I think much larger participation in a, a greater diversity f- diversity of games, and the conclusion of 2012 being it coming back to um, a smaller subset, but each one having just a little bit more potency with um, GW being the only one who's taken the hit but I feel like they're going to take the hit because GW is headed over to the uh, caring less about the tabletop experience and more about the far more uh, economically beneficial gaming space of selling their IP to companies like Relic and THQ to produce video games for them. Which brings up my second point, and I feel that by the conclusion of 2012, those companies that are the ones who actually do expand into the the video game market uh, in an attempt to bring in more people who aren't part of our tabletop world are going to be the big winners uh, moving forward. If for no other reason than the company itself will have um, a little bit larger cash stores to decide if they're going to pump that back into the tabletop experience. So that's my one and my two. Both of them, I think, are actually going to be a positive thing in the overall size of the tabletop community, albeit not huge factors, relatively small ones. Extended discussion. Well, I, I got to agree with you, um, though, Ray, that, I mean, coming up with my own game system, I have I have a team of, like, three or four other writers that are helping me write fluff and backstory and everything, And there's nights when we're sitting, eating wings, and we're like, it would be a lot easier just to sell this to somebody. Be like, here is four books worth of all the back history and the story, and this guy's this guy, this guy, this guy. Make Dragon Age. You know, like, do something with this. I don't want to deal with it anymore. So I completely understand. And it's from a a standpoint of buying a $16,000 laser printer, buying a $10,000 vacuum mold, buying all the resources, buying all the packaging, shipping it out, contacting all the distributors. And this is on a small scale. This is like I want to sell a 1,000 units a month. This is super small scale. So for GW not to go into video games is just a terrible idea on their part, and I feel like you're right. There's no reason that they shouldn't just transition over completely. Yeah, we've been kind of, we've been kind of hinting at that. I know uh, a lot of the... Um, 
predictions that I've been making over the last couple of years have focused on GW being more of an IP company and less of a product company. Um, because I'm sorry, their catalog of Black Library and everything else is is worthy of note. I mean, they've done an extensively great job of it. People know it, even if the only experience you have with the game is through Dawn of War. And those companies who are creating software for them are are just putting a lot of respect into the IP, if not the game experience itself. Um, I, I would, I have to agree. I mean, as much as I love to bash GW in general, just because they're GW, uh, the Black Library is it's impressive. They do a quality product at times. Um, I would say you would hit more than you miss if you just picked up one of their books off of a shelf. Yeah, who has time to read? But uh, I would completely agree with you on that. <laughs> and you're the only one to raise their hand, Smurf. So um, <laughs> moving on to question number six, it is the universally understood end of the show prediction question. And here it is. <sighs> Question number six, make a prediction no matter how outlandish about what your sense of the state of tabletop gaming will be like next year. And for this, we will start with Solid Smurf. I see a heavy hitter in the gaming industry making a big mistake. I really do, because we're getting to the point where we have several companies that are clawing for the top, and one of them is going to be like, I have this great idea, and it's going to be a terrible, terrible, terrible idea, and it's it's not it's going to send shockwaves to the gaming community. I know it. I've seen it. It's going to happen. Yes, Smurf is in favor of vague <laughs> predictions that are that way. It'll be more likely coming true. John, what's your thoughts? <laughs> Well, after the zombie apocalypse, there's not really going to be time for game. But um, <laughs> nice. No, no, cool. in all honesty, in all honesty, next year, I, I really feel like there's not going to be anything major happening. I, I don't see anything changing so drastically that in a year's time, looking back, there'll be any difference, you know, from today's today's gaming standards. Tony, what's your thoughts? Uh, I hope it doesn't happen, but I think something outlandish would be, I think Games Workshop failed with Fantasy 8th Edition. They didn't satisfy fluff players, and they didn't satisfy comp players. And 40K is their gem, because it ain't Lord of the Rings. So if they fail with 40K 6th Edition, like they failed with Fantasy 8th Edition, and it'll be realized about six months to a year after its release, GW could totally just get this mass exodus of blogs and everything just saying... F them, and there'll be a, a rush to some other game. I'm not going to say it's privateer press, but there'll be uh, some kind of dramatic exodus. And I hope it doesn't happen, but, I mean, they're going to roll the dice with 6th edition, and we'll, we'll, we'll hope they roll a 6, but they could roll a 1, and we could all be, uh, you know, playing Infinity. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing would be a problem with that. But um, for my prediction, nope. um, I kind of let... The cat out of the bag in my last answer, I think what you're going to see is, again, um, this time next year, I'm going to see that the number one through five companies that are doing tabletop games are going to be um, in more control of the pie than they currently are right now, with the exception of number one, and GW is going to lose some, but again, um, in a way that's actually more economic for them. And with that, uh, we have concluded Season 4, Episode 1, the, the State of the Tabletop Gaming. Uh, for those of you guys who were upset that we didn't do a award show last year, it simply was we didn't have enough uh, shows. And uh, we're replacing it with this State of the Union address with the hope that in December of this year, we will have an, a Season 4 award show where, <laughs> excuse me, where everyone will be dressed like John. Have a guys. Well, except for I'll be in my purple suit. So. Uh, <laughs> where everyone but John will be dressed like John. <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs>